The Supreme Court on 21st January 22 conferred daughters with equal rights to father property even prior to codification of Hindu personal laws and enactment of Hindu Succession Act in 1956 and said that the law of inheritance would apply to partition of properties even if the father had died interstate before 1956. To understand this judgment it is necessary to understand first how many types of properties are there under Hindu law and how many amendments has been done in favor of daughters since inception Hello everyone I am Dr Priya Sipaha and in this video we are going to discuss about the amendments in the favor of daughters property since inception There are two types of property described under Hindu law. The first one is ancestral property and second is self acquired property. Ancestral property is that property which is passed on by the ancestor to their heirs. Whereas self acquired property is acquired by the person himself. The survivorship rule was prevalent before 1956 act. which means that the property after the death of the common ancestor developed by the survivor and that survivor will only be the son who is having a birth right in the property of the ancestor there was no right of a female in the property and only three generation the three living generation will have the right on the property of the ancestor The Hindu Succession Act 1956 was enacted by the Parliament in favor of two big amendments. The first one is there was a comprehensive system of inheritance and succession into one act only. Secondly, the word intestate has been clearly defined in this particular act, which means that if a person died without making his will of his self acquired property then how his property will be distributed among his heir under this act female are granted ownership of all property acquired either before or after the signing of the act abolishing their limited ownership status which means they were having some of the property if they are widow or daughter in law of that particular person although the actual right on the property of the father was introduced first in 2005 amendment in section 6 where daughter was made as a heir or a co-partner of the property by birth 2005 amendment of hindu succession act clearly states that daughter is also a co-partner of a hindu joint family and it says that the daughter is having a right by birth and he and she becomes a co-partner in her own right in the same manner as the son and lastly be a subject to the same liability in respect of the said co-partnery property as that of a son and any reference to the hindu medakshara co-partner shall be deemed to include a reference to a daughter of a co-partner but again there was a condition that provided that nothing contained in this subsection shall affect on invalidate any disposition or alienation including any partition or testamentary disposition of property which had take place before the 20th day of december 2004 a date was mentioned in this act that is 9th september 2005 which says that if a father dies after that then a, fa- a daughter is having a right in the property of the father whereas there are certain judgment which states that if a father de- dies before that date the daughter is not having a right on father's property all this the legislative intent to the amending act was clear as is the case with any amendment in the statute It became a subject matter of intense legal debate and resulted in various court interpreting the same in divergence. Now this particular confusion has been sorted in Vinita Sharma versus Rakesh Sharma case in 2020. The court clearly mentioned that the provision contained in section 6 of the Hindu Succession Act 1956 states co-partner on the daughter born before or after amendment in the same manner as son and with the same rights and liabilities now about 
the amendment which is made on Thursday that is 21st of January. This judgment states that the self-acquired property of a person who died interstate in 1949, again interstate means without writing a will, would devolve on his sole daughter despite the man admittedly living in a joint family and could not have passed on to the deceased person's brother on the basis of the survivorship law in force prior to 1956 and upon his death to his children. Referring to the ancient text and Smritis, Justice Murari said, It is clear that ancient texts, as also the Smritis, the commentaries are written by various renowned learned persons and even judicial pronouncements have recognized the rights of several female heirs, the wives and the daughters being the foremost them. The bench said that the succession of the properties prior to 1956 would also include the daughter's right. If a property of a male dying interstate is a self-acquired property or obtained in partition of a co fastener or a family property, the same would develop the inheritance and not by the survivorship and a daughter of such a male Hindu would be entitled to inherit such property in preference to other collaterals. The bench also clarified that if a female Hindu dies interstate without leaving any issue, then the property inherited by her from her father or mother would go to heirs of her father, whereas the property inherited from her husband or by father-in-law would go to the heirs of the husband. So now it is clear that daughter is having an equal right to father's property even prior to codification of Hindu personal laws and enactment of Hindu Succession Act in 1956. So that's all about this video. I hope you like it and if you like it, do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe my channel. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.